Alright, first things first, you're definitely going to need a um, micro SD card with a lot of memory. Um, there's a list of them on which ones you can use. Uh, the one I chose was uh, Transcend, it's a micro SD. Uh, there'll be a link down in the description of which ones work, which ones don't. Um, this one's been pretty solid for me. I picked it up at GameStop, so um, let's get started on what you got to do. Alright, first thing you want to do is uh, actually download RetroArch. Uh, there's a couple sites you know you can get it from, so you know you can just type in RetroArch uh, download. It'll come up. Uh, LibRetro.com is a site that they you know uh, post it. So right here it says 1.36 is released. Uh, they actually do have 1.41. You know if you want different versions, you just go up here to the download section, and on the left hand side. You'll see all these different, uh, you know, uh, groupings. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it. What you'll want to do is just go to the stable releases. They go all the way back to 1.2. There's 1.4.1, the most uh, recent one. Um, I'm not a big fan of 1.4 versions. They have a different configuration, uh, you know, for the uh, the controller, uh, the default settings, and you know, and just. Eh, it's okay. I mean, you can get what you want, but you know, it's not the one I'm using. So, uh, I'm currently using 1.33. You can use 1.34, 1.36. Uh, there's only a slight change to the interface. They made things a little bit easier to navigate, but they're primarily the same. So, for instance, if you wanted 1.3, you know, you go down to Nintendo. There's the Wii. Uh, you know, and then you just click on the. Uh, RetroArc.7z file and uh, go ahead and download it uh, to your desktop. Uh, you know what you're going to need though is a uh, you know WinRAR or 7-zip kind of program that'll let you open this file. Okay. Okay. So this will be your file, and you just want to extract it. Okay. Once it's done, you have the uh, RetroArc folder. Okay. Now this whole folder here is what you're going to put on your SD card. So let's go there. Oops. So on the SD card, mine is letter G. So under your apps folder, you're going to put it right here. Okay. So you'll notice uh, that instead of just dragging over RetroArch and leaving it as such, I've renamed it to RetroArch-Wii. Now the reason I did that is because if you're going to use the uh, channels, uh, the naming convention has to be uh, RetroArch-WIIWI, uh, uh, or else it won't come up. Uh, it won't find it. It's looking for that specific name. So if you do launch RetroArch as a channel, you know, with a WAD manager, uh, then you have to do that. I haven't done it, but just in case I want to in the future, I went ahead and named it. That way there, there's, you know, no problems. Okay, so in your apps folder, uh, which will be on the root of your SD card, uh, you'll stick it in there and rename it to RetroArch Wii. All right, and that's it. Now what we're going to do is take out our card and we're going to boot up uh, the Wii with the card in there. So you'd hit eject, pull it out, go put it in your Wii, boot it up. Okay. Uh, once you launch Homebrew and you launch uh, the Retro Wii, uh, what it'll do, or RetroArch, It'll create this folder right here. So in your root directory, this folder will not exist. Okay. I have other emulators and some other folders here. Uh, you know, when I created uh, Homebrew, that's a whole nother Google, whole nother topic. Uh, creating a Homebrew channel is really simple, guys. But once you get it, you can load up RetroArch and other um, programs. So anyway, when you boot up, it'll create this folder right here. Okay. Uh, create your ROMs folder. That way you have somewhere to put your ROMs, okay? And the rest of these will appear on their own. You know, these are files that get created as you use different cores and different things like that. So the way RetroArch works is that it's a interface to several emulators. 
So for instance, you can see I was playing FB Alpha Neo, which is Neo Geo, uh, Capcom Play System 1 and 2, uh, Arcade MAME, MAME 78. So these are uh, different uh, cores that I've launched. Okay. So anyway, uh, this folder will get created along with a playlist, this folder in RetroArch folder and your root directory will get created along with playlists, save files, and system, and some of these other files. Okay, this is all you know, created by the Wii as soon as you boot it up. That's all you gotta do. So then, you pull out your card, put it back in the computer, okay? And then now you'll have the RetroArch folder. So go ahead and go in there. You'll create uh, a ROMs directory, and this is where you put your ROMs, okay? Now, I've actually separated mine out. There we go. All right, so I've kind of separated separ separated <laughs> mine out to CPS1, CPS2, uh, MAME 2000, MAME 2003, and Neo Geo ROMs. The reason for doing that is when you launch a core uh, to launch a ROM, so a core is you know the emulator that plays the ROM or the game. So if I want to play, let's say, uh, Forgotten Worlds, well, I have to know which core to launch you know, to play that game. So to make it easier, I made folders for each core that I'm using. Okay, and RetroArch comes with uh, about 12 or so, and I'll show you that in a minute. So I made folders for the ones that I like to play. So, for instance, in CPS1, which is Capcom Play System 1, I have, uh, you know, 12 or so uh, uh, ROMs in here, 1941, Mercs, UN Squadron, Willow, Punisher, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter Alpha, uh, you know, and so on and so forth, Final Fight, uh, and you can get all the ones that you want. So now that you have this ROMs folder, and you can organize this however you want, that's just my recommendation, but, uh, you know, put all your games inside the ROMs folder. You can just dump them all right here if you want. So in this folder here for CPS1, let's say you wanted to play Capcom Play System 1 games. So you go to Google. If you want to go directly to a website, you know, like emuparadise.me, you know, this is a great site too. Uh, you know, they have a lot of ROMs. So on the left-hand side, you can go to uh, ROMs, ISOs, and games. Okay, so on this page, uh, you'll see different things, uh, or different ROMs sets divided up by consoles, um, uh, arcade systems, in this case uh, say you wanted to play uh, you know the Capcom Play System 1 ROMs which I was just showing you okay so you can click in there and download them individually or you can scroll down and they have complete ROM sets so if you wanted to get the whole thing you know one big file so they got Neo Geo, MAME, uh, NES uh, you know pretty much all the ones that you're looking for uh, and then of course you can go by you know the letter and uh, if you want to get the CPS1 set you can go there or the CPS2 set you can go here so when you click on them uh, you'll go down to the download link um, it'll give you a question make sure that you're not uh, a robot <laughs> and it'll download a RAR file uh, which you'll have to then extract so the file will look like this uh, if you get the complete set, it'll be CPS ROM, you know, dot RAR, and when you explode it, it'll be all of this here. Uh, you guys might be asking, what are these files here? These dot NVs. Uh, these are created when you uh, boot up the system and you start setting uh, different, you know, uh, configurations for your buttons and things like that. So, you know, those will just get created on their own. They don't come with the uh, the ROM sets. Anyway, uh, so that's where you actually get your ROMs. Um, you know, there's plenty of sites to choose from. I like Emu Paradise just because it's a little easier. Um, you know, if you actually click in here, you know, you can, ah, you can say list all titles uh, for the Capcom Play, Play System one, and then go down here and then just pick the one that you want. Um, a lot of people get confused. Uh, for instance, you'll see how Final Fight is listed here several times, right? So the one that you need. 99% of the time is world, okay? That's the parent ROM. Uh, these right here are all the sub ROMs. So if you're trying to play like Japanese uh, version of it or a US version of it, the default is usually US anyway. But if you have to get the, uh, uh, the sub ROMs, that's because you're probably, you're probably trying to play it in a different language or something like that. But all you need is the Final Fight 
uh, world parent ROM. So in mine, you'll see FF Fight. You know, so when I uh, download these, I just pick the main one. Um, you'll know the main one because it'll also be the biggest file. You know, it, it, if it's really tiny, then it's not you know the main file. So like Street Fighter 2 here. Um, there's all of these ROMs, right? And there's two worlds in this case. So I just downloaded the most recent version, 910522. They probably fixed something or, you know, had some little glitch or blu a bug or something that they addressed. So, you know, anyway, um, you know, The Punisher, that's a great game. Uh, so grab the world and that's it. So anyway, now that you have your folder, uh, you can dump all your ROMs into, you know, just ROMs if you want under RetroArch, or what you can do is uh, just make it uh, specific by folder uh, for each core. So I wanted to do it by core because it's easier, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. So you just repeat this process. Um, you do it for CPS2. Uh, you know, I downloaded a bunch of games for CPS2, X-Men versus uh, Street Fighter, that's a really cool game. <laughs> a lot of these you won't know what they are just by looking at the names, you know, you just have to deal with it. The, if you rename these, it will break it. So just leave them named whatever they are. So same thing for MAME 2000, uh, which is, you know, MAME.37. You can make a folder for MAME 2003, which is, you know, for .78. You know, I got Galaga and Joust. Uh, that's the same thing over here. Basically, when you're browsing for the ROMs, uh, you go up here to the ROM section. Instead of getting CPS1, uh, you know, you'd go get the uh, the main ROMs, uh, you know, for the 78 and uh, 37. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> these are kind of hit and miss. You know, you'll find that some work, some don't. That's because there's a memory limitation on the Wii. So if the file is bigger than 23 megs, uh, it's not going to load in memory. So it's gonna fail. So if you're trying to get, you know, a really big game, uh, I don't know. Let's just take, for example, Dance Revolution. Let's say this game is 35 megs. It's not even worth time, uh, worth your time downloading it. Uh, one of the quick ways, when I did the downloads for the complete ROM sets for like CPS One, all I did was I took it to the uh, the size and I just sorted it and then I just shift you know and I deleted everything that was more than 23 so 24 or higher because I was like it's not gonna work it's not even waste my time or my space so uh, so I have um, for the Neo Geo so I have Samurai Showdown um, why does it keep defaulting to small uh, Samurai Showdown, Samurai Showdown 2, 3 um, I can get rid of this file actually uh, and Samurai Showdown 4 okay uh, because they're all underneath, uh, let's see the details. So there's uh, King of Fighters 96, that's 23 meg, so that'll fit. Uh, Samurai Showdown 4 was 22 meg, so that'll fit. Unfortunately, Samurai Showdown 5 um, did not. It's, uh, I think it's like 60 you know, megs or something like that. Anyway, uh, so that's just a little bit of you know, heads up on what you're downloading and how to download ROMs. Uh, you know, if a ROM does not work, uh, just go to a different site and get another one. I've had that happen so many times. Uh, the ROM sets were pretty clean. I only had about, you know, out of, I don't know, I think it was like 40 games. I think I had probably six to eight fail. You know, I just had to go get them at another site. Um, you know, just, it is what it is. You know, ROMs are hit or miss. If you're not buying the game, then you get what you pay for. <laughs> so you just got to deal with it. So anyway, uh, you can get these ROM sets here. Uh, the Neo Geo, you can also go down here for like Samurai Showdown, like, like I showed you. Uh, you want to get Metal Slug. Uh, I think most of these fit, except for, I think five is too big, maybe three. Anyway, but uh, you get the point. So uh, once you download all the ROMs that you want, okay, the other thing that you got to do is, I don't know if you caught it, right here. This is not a game. And why can't I get this bigger, extra large? Well, that's kind of silly, but that's okay. All right, right here. It says Neo Geo. That is not a ROM, that is not a game. That is what they call BIOS. So under RetroArch, ROMs. For all of these cores, and I'm gonna show you that on the system. 
for all of these cores. I have a CPS1 core, a CPS2 core, a MAME arcade, and a MAME78 core, which Retro Arc uses to launch the games. Well, to launch the Neo Geo games, you actually have to have what they call BIOS. So it tells the emulator what kind of system it's running, and it loads some things into its memory so it plays the game correctly. Okay, otherwise you're going to get a black screen of death, it's going to kick you back out to the retro channel, or the homebrew channel, and you're going to scratch your head and try and figure out what's going on. Okay, yeah, so for that file, what you have to do is just type in, uh, oops, if I could spell, my goodness. <laughs> All right, Neo Geo BIOS uh, download, okay? Uh, so Emu Paradise came up. You can get it from a couple other sites. Uh, cool ROMs pretty good. Love ROM, yep, there it is. Love ROMs is another one. Uh, Dope ROMs is another one that I've also used. Uh, so there's several. You know, we can just pick the top. It's fine. Uh, yeah, it's kind of easier just to get it all in one site. You click on the download link, and that'll take you to the download link. Okay. Uh, once you download it. Uh, Neo Geo is the only uh, core that requires the Neo Geo, well, sorry, the BIOS, to be in the same directory as the games. So under RetroArch, uh, there's a folder here called System. Okay, and if so, if you're playing Super Nintendo, uh, other main, you know. Uh, Arcades, uh, Genesis, etc., Turbo Graphics CD, whatever it is that you're playing, um, you basically just have to download those BIOS files as well. So, quick recap. Okay, what you'll do <clears throat> is under the Apps folder, you'll put your Retro Arc. Uh, <clears throat> that zip file from the website that we downloaded it from here. Okay, so you'll unzip that and you'll stick it in here and then rename it RetroArc-WII for Wii. <clears throat> then you'll pull out your card, put it into your Wii, boot it up. And once you do boot up, it'll automatically create this folder, the RetroArc folder. Okay, and everything in here will be created. Okay. Well, as you launch cores, and other files will get created, but don't worry about it. The whole structure is created. You put all your games that you download, your ROM sets in here. Okay. Uh, for Neo Geo, you'll download the BIOS specifically inside Neo Geo. For all other BIOS files, you'll put them in here under System. Okay. Now let's get to gaming, and we'll start checking out the menu. Okay, so... Why do this anyway? Don't we have games on the Virtual Console? And as you can see, yeah, I got a lot of games on the Virtual Console. I got Samurai Showdown 3, Street Fighter, Samurai Showdown 2, you know, all these games I got from the Virtual Console. Problem is, uh, some of them aren't available, okay? Uh, it is kind of nice to be able to just download and the buttons are ready and set. There's no configuration. Uh, you know, for any of these, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, you know, all the emulators are just kind of built in. Uh, and, you know, that is really cool. But, uh, you know, for some of the games that don't work, um, you know, the Homebrew Channel are not available. The Homebrew Channel, you know, gives you that capability. Okay? So anyway, like I said, this is not a tutorial on how to set up Homebrew Channel. Uh, do that on your own, okay? So, once you launch it up, all your applications that you have in Homebrew are going to be in here. Um, I've loaded up individual emulators, you know, Nintendo, Sega Genesis, etc. Uh, Main, which has some arcade games in it as well. Uh, I was basically comparing it to the Retro Arc. Uh, I'm still kind of determining which one I like better. So anyway, this will be the second time you've loaded uh, Retro Arc. The first time was to get that folder created. Remember the one that we talked about, the Retro Arc folder? underneath the root directory okay all right so what you want to do is this is your main menu okay so first you want to go into settings and then go down to uh, video uh, this is where you'll set your different aspect ratios I like one one 
they have a ton. They got two, one, three, two, three, four, 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 five, four. I mean, there's tons, okay? So pick the ratio that you like. Now you can even do custom ones and then you change it, you know, your custom X and Y here, okay? So some of the menu options are just, you know, things I'm going through here. Uh, for the input, when you select input, uh, you can select the maximum number of users. If you have games that have like, f you know, five, six, seven, eight players, you can set it. Uh, I think it defaults to five. You know, I set it to four. Uh, and then down here for input user one, two, three, and four, uh, you just set it. So for this example, I'm gonna come around. You're, uh, you know, for this example, I'm actually using the Wii Pro Classic uh, controller, uh, and it'll automatically detect that watch. So if I go in here. Uh, right there it shows you the device uh, index it says classic controller so you can go to bind all and it'll just ask you to walk through each button so if I click that it'll say hit your B button okay hit your Y select start up down left right a X L R L2 R2 um, I don't have a L3 so I'm gonna let that go uh, the left analog stick, go to the right, go to the left, go down, go up, do your other analog stick with the right, left, down and up, and then it's set, okay? Um, then you can do the same thing for uh, user 2, user 3, user 4, so that each one of the controls are done, you know, for those users. Um, they have defaults that, you know, work pretty good, but just in case you want to tailor it for whatever. There's tons of options in here, guys. I haven't gone through all of them. Uh, but one you do want to check is directory. So here, system BIOS, you'll see that it says SD card RetroArch system. So yeah, remember we talked about the BIOS. All BIOS files go in here with the exception of das right Neo Geo. Okay, that one goes in the ROM folder. Okay, uh, your core directory will be uh, uh, under apps RetroArch Wii if you want to add more cores. You know, I added MAME 78 and MAME 37 which weren't in there. Speaking of cores, uh, but most of these are default. You don't have to set these, by the way. Speaking of cores, let's actually go there. So here's the main menu. As you see at the bottom, it says FBA Cores CPS1. So by default, actually that's the last one I had loaded. Uh, so you go to Load Core, and here's your list. Okay, you got you know uh, Genesis. Uh, you know this is a Famicom. It's also for Nintendo. Uh, the Neo Lib Retro, that's for Neo Geo. These are all Final Burn Alphas, which are really good, by the way. You have your generic Final Burn Alpha, which you can also use. Uh, you know, Final Burn Alpha CPS1, CPS2, etc., etc. So arcade, you know, whatever. So let's say I want to go to CPS2. So I click A, it loads it up. So now on the bottom of the screen, it'll say FBA Cores CPS2. Okay, well, how do I play a game? Well, they call it content, which is kind of confusing for me. So you've got to load content, you want to select a file, and you go wherever you put it. In our case, uh, I'm using the SD, and here's all the folders. Remember the uh, RetroArt folder? So we'll go in there. Remember the ROMs folder? There you go. And then I broke it up into individual folders. Now if you have everything listed here, hopefully you picked the right core. For me, I'd rather divide it up. <laughs> Just makes it easier. So we'll go into CPS2. And, I don't know, let's try uh, Aliens vs. Predator. Why not? Click A. So what it'll do is it'll start loading it up. Uh, it takes about, I don't know, I think it's like 10 to 15 seconds. Then you'll see it go through a, uh, a visual test, right? And voila, there we go. Now, a lot of you might be asking, uh, what other, you know, uh, controllers are compatible? Uh, I'm going to show you. So it does work with the uh, Hori fighting sticks. You can hook those up. Uh, oops, that turned off. Uh, they work fine. You can also use uh, the control pad. So I don't have fighting sticks, uh, or four fighting sticks, I only got two. So I'm using two and two. So you, know, you can easily uh, set it up. So you know, the game is running, so what do you do? Um, I set mine up, and this is in your input configuration. Uh, the minus sign is the coin op, you know, button. So if I hit negative, you know, it'll add a coin. You know, you can go minus sign again to two players, right? And then just hit the start button. 
and there you go. And then the game will start. Okay? And it's pretty cool. There it goes. All right. So on a two-player game, you know, uh, it's only going to be using one and two. Uh, what I would like to show you, though, that's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, and then one and two player. Well, let's make sure it actually works, right? So I'm going to pick him and him by default. All right. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. All right, so all the buttons work. Of course, I can only do one at a time. Boom. Uh, that guy's pretty cool. I like him. Anyway, you get the point. Now, okay, how did I do that? Uh, if you hit the home button, that by default will bring up your menu, okay? Now, one of the things I want to tell you is that by um, knowing that the Wii doesn't have a lot of memory, okay, one of the things that you want to do is close content first. So select that. That closes the game out. Uh, B goes back. And then load up a new content, load up a new game. Okay, the reason I say that is because if you go from one game to another, sometimes the wheel will crash, it doesn't have a lot of memory, you know, so, you know, it suffers from that. So, uh, does it play four-player games? Uh, absolutely. Let's try, uh, I think I have the Simpsons on the arcade one, and that's a four-player game. Let's try that one. So, one of the things, ah, it did it, good. That's the one thing I wanted to catch. Sometimes when you switch cores, it'll cut off your controller. You know, just, you know, hit the button, get it resynced again, and that way you're not wondering what happened. Okay? Uh, so each core will have settings, you know, input options, uh, you know. So if you want to set it up for different cores, for different controllers, you know, you can do that. So let's go load content. Uh, this one is main 2000. Uh, 37 so we'd go into here and Simpsons I do have it down there okay let's go Simpsons okay loading the Simpsons yay now this one is uh, pretty interesting because um, even though I have this ROM running um, for whatever reason some of the graphics are a little weird <laughs> so I gotta get a better one but just be aware that some of the ROMs may not be perfect, okay? So, uh, the point of this, though, I wanted to show you, like, see the clouds? There's little edges around that, and some of the text is a little garbled. Uh, you know, I don't really care like that. You know, I could care less. It's, it doesn't bother me. So, anyway, we'll hit the minus sign on the player one joystick. Now we'll hit minus on the player two. We'll hit minus on the Hori. And minus on the other Hori. And then start on each one of those. We'll get us in there. And the jewel goes into Maggie's mouth and she goes running off. Yay. <laughs> I remember playing this. So there it is. It's a little garbled, but whatever. I just want to demonstrate four player. Okay, so uh, here's the Hori sticks. Uh, they are working just fine, you know. So that's Hori stick number four. This is Hori stick number three. Uh, hit the start button on number two. Start button on number one. And they are all working just fine. <laughs> okay, that's a little annoying. I'm trying to stalk. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the point of this was to show you that the four players do work. Um, there's no problem with the Hori sticks, the classic controllers, you know, any of that. So if you want to use your uh, fighting sticks and things like that for some of the arcade fighters, you can do that. Okay, so anyway, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to show you this is a lot of people say, how come you don't just use uh, the PC? I didn't want to do a PC, you know, um, because I don't want to have to buy another PC, you know, and hook it up to my TV. I already have a Wii, it's lighter, it's portable, it already has a lot of other my games on it, 
the biggest reason though is because the Wii, uh, you can play four player as you saw. I can play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Part 1, Part 2, Saturday Night Slam Masters. Uh, you know, there's a lot of three player games also out there. There's a bunch of three player games um, that are out there too. Uh, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, that's a three player game. Uh, anyway, so you can't do that with a PC, well, as easy. You know, most people, you know, already have several controllers for the Wii, uh, you know, for the PC, um, you know, they don't. So, anyway, uh, it's just a lot easier, you know. Uh, but anyway, to each his own, however you guys want to do it. But hopefully this helped. I'm going to put a couple links in the description below. And uh, if you guys have any questions or if you had some other questions or you want me to do a video on the SDL main uh, and the differences and how to set that up, so post them below and I'll get to them. Thanks.